All right, this next set of notes has to do with the lobes of the brain and the regions of the brain. Right, so we are going to start with this picture right here. Oops. All right, so first I have the cerebrum, and I have this in brown, and I have outlined all of this right here in brown. This whole area represents the cerebrum. Notice that we have the ridges and the furrows, the gyrus and the sulci. That's what all of this part right here is, the cerebrum. All right, so this right here, this is orange. I know it's kind of hard to see on there, but this is orange. And so I have lightly shaded this section right here in orange because this represents the frontal lobe. The motor cortex is the last little gyrus right there on the back of the frontal lobe. And we'll talk about terms for that here in just a second, but motor cortex. And so that's still orange, but I made this light orange and I made this dark orange motor cortex. Then this whole region right here is the parietal lobe. And this is the sensory cortex, which is the first gyrus right there on the parietal lobe. So I made parietal lobe light blue and then I made the sensory cortex dark blue. All right, next on the back here, occipital lobe, I have that red. Honestly, the colors don't matter. That's just helping me to tell things apart. Temporal lobe is this right here. So I've colored that green. This is the cerebellum. And this is the spinal cord right there. Okay. So, generally speaking, sense of taste, I've got a T right here. Smell, we're going to look at that olfactory bulbs on the frontal lobe um, on the next picture even better, but I've kind of put it in this general area right here. Broca's area, generally right here. And Wernicke's area, generally right here. So, Broca's, Wernicke, smell, and taste on here. All right, so underneath... Motor cortex, precentral gyrus. So motor cortex, central, precentral gyrus. Gyrus because it's the ridge. Precentral gyrus. Motor cortex is responsible for planning, control, and execution of voluntary movements. Planning, control, and execution of voluntary movements. Sensory cortex, somatosensory cortex post-central gyrus, so central, post, beyond, post-central gyrus. Plays a role in the sensory precep perception such as heat, touch, and nociception, which is pain, nociception. So sensory cortex, it's also called somatosensory, cor somatosensory cortex, also called post-central gyrus, it plays a role in sensory perception, such as heat, touch, and nociception. Nociception is pain. All right, w, the W on the picture, that stood for Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is the area of your brain um, connected to language understanding and language development. Wernicke's area, language understanding and language development. Broca's area connected with speech production. Broca's area is connected with speech production. All right, this next little diagram I added in here, I mean, it's basically the same as the lobes of the brain, but I thought it was a really good view as to, you know, different, looking at them from different angles and seeing where those lobes of the brain really are. And so I've kind of accordion to that and put that in there down on the bottom. All right, next picture. So again, the cerebrum, I've got this in brown, and so I've colored lightly this entire area in brown because that would represent the cerebrum. But the difference between this picture and this one is, is that this brain has been cut in half. 
So the brain's been cut in half, and we are looking at basically the right lobe of the brain, the right side of the brain. It doesn't really matter right or left. It's just giving us a uh, look at the internal structures of the brain. So this right here is the cerebrum. This I have in green. This is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Here is the cerebellum. Um, okay, so that makes up the sort of easiest ones here. Oh, uh, let's do this first. So here's the cerebrum. This was the frontal lobe. And on the frontal lobe on the other picture, we put an S for sense of smell. On the underside of the frontal lobe, this area right here would represent an olfactory bulb. And so that has to do with our sense of smell. So this region right here would be an olfactory bulb and it represents the area responsible for our sense of smell. All right, so kind of in the middle, I just sort of shaded this in, and it's kind of inside a little cavity there, but I just shaded this in yellow. That would represent the area of the brain that's the thalamus. Hypothalamus, hypo, low. So hypothalamus is below the thalamus. So here's the thalamus, here's the hypothalamus. Pituitary gland hangs off of the hypothalamus. This entire structure right here is the brainstem. So I've highlighted that, I've outlined it in blue, and I wrote it in blue right here. Oops, that would help if you could see that. Huh? So this whole area is the brainstem. The brainstem has the pons, which is the little bump, kind of protrudes out, and the medulla oblongata. So this is the pons, and the medulla oblongata is the area in purple. As this extends down off of the brain, it then becomes the spinal cord. All right, so for these right here, these are just um, essentially regions. So A is the amygdala, and here's my A right here. M is the midbrain. So M would be this area right here. And H, hippocampus, that's going to be hippocampus right here. And so that's a general, there's my H right there. All right, so, oh, that's what I did. Put olfactory bulb over here, and then underneath, just gave myself a little note that it's going to process the sense of smell. Just a little bit more information. Okay, so, yes, underneath here, so on the second bottom half of the page, there were some case studies that were very important in learning some of the regions and functions of the brain. All right, so I've got it divided into four. First here is Henry Meliason. So Henry Meliason. With this patient, we learned about the hippocampus and amygdala. So it was removed from this patient in order to help him control seizures. And one of the symptoms that he had from it was the fact that he had permanent amnesia. And so that helped doctors to understand that the hippocampus is responsible for um, long-term memory. So Henry Meliason, hippocampus and amygdala were removed to control his seizures, and it led to permanent amnesia. Phineas Gage, there was an accident and a railroad spike just went through his head and through the anterior left frontal lobe of his brain, and he ended up with a dramatic change to his personality. So that led doctors to understand that personality, reasoning, uh, problem solving were all really important in the frontal lobe. So Phineas Gage, railroad accident, a spike ended up getting shoved through the anterior left frontal lobe of his brain, and he ended up with a dramatic change to personality. All right, so here, Paul Broca, Broca's area. Broca had a patient that had a tumor on the left frontal lobe, and the patient can only say tan. Tan, 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 tan. He could understand what people were telling him to do. He could follow directions, but he could only respond with one word. It's like he only knew that one word. He could understand language, 
but he couldn't produce language. So that led to the understanding that Broca's area um, had to do with speech production. So he had uh, inability to produce speech, but he could understand what was said to him. And then Wernicke, Carl Wernicke, um, his patient or patients, he had patients who could speak or produce language, but what they said didn't make sense. So they could produce more words than the Broca's patient could, but their stuff didn't make sense. Additionally, when people said things to them, to these patients, they could not understand what was said to them. So Wernicke's area, people could speak slash produce language, but what the patient said, what they said, didn't make sense. It was incoherent. Additionally, the patients could not understand what was said to them. So when they were given instructions or told to do something, their response didn't make sense. It didn't follow along with what was said to them.